Hi everybody, this is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack, and in this podcast we'll be covering the overall organization of skeletal muscle tissue. Each of our body's muscles, like the biceps brachii of the arm or trapezius of the back, is an organ made of thousands of muscle cells called muscle fibers. The term cell and fiber are interchangeable when discussing muscular tissue. Many animal cells, we know, have a rounded shape, but muscle fibers appear as long, thin strands, hence the name fiber. They are also multinucleated, which means they have multiple nuclei inside their cells, as opposed to most cells having only one single nucleus. Longer cells often require additional nuclei to maintain the needs of the cell. In addition to the muscle fibers, whole muscles also contain other tissues like epithelial tissues, connective tissues, and nervous tissues, which together make up the whole muscle, which of course is an organ made up of these diverse collections of tissue types. There is a strong association between connective tissue and muscular tissue, in which connective tissue serves as a protective cover around the muscle. The subcutaneous layer, or hypodermis, which is made of adipose tissue and areolar connective tissue, is located between muscle and skin. It allows passage of blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, and nerves into and out of the muscles. The adipose tissue stores fat and helps insulate the muscle, minimizing the loss of heat, as well as acting as a protective cushion against physical damage. A dense sheet or wide band of dense irregular connective tissue called fascia surrounds and supports muscles, filling in the spaces between muscles, allowing passage of blood vessels and nerves, and binding together muscles having similar functions. And let's look further at the relationship between muscular tissue and its connective tissues. There are three specific layers of connective tissue that originate from the fascia that act to strengthen and protect muscle. These layers are, from outer to inner, the epimysium, the paramysium, and the endomysium. The epimysium is the outermost external layer of dense irregular connective tissue which surrounds the entire whole muscle. The paramysium is another layer of dense irregular connective tissue that surrounds groups of 10 to 100 muscle fibers gathered together into little bundles called fascicles. You've seen fascicles before if you've ever looked closely at a cut of meat like steak and see its grain. Those are the fascicles. The endomysium is the innermost layer and is made of reticular fibers which have a branched net-like arrangement. The endomysium is inside the fascicle. Here is one single fasciculus containing bundles of muscle fibers each surrounded by an endomysium, which separates the individual muscle fibers from each other. All three of these connective tissue layers are extensions from and continuous with the connective tissue in the muscle's fascia and other connecting structures such as tendons. Tendons are thick, rope-like cords that extend from a muscle and attach or insert into a bone's outer periosteum. You're familiar with the large Achilles tendon that attaches the calf muscle, known as the gastrocnemius, to the heel bone of the foot, allowing more powerful movements of the leg during running or jumping. And you can also observe the smaller tendons on your hand that attach to your fingers, allowing more precise movements. Other tendons called aponeuroses have a shape that is more flat and sheet-like, such as the epicranial or scalp aponeurosis on the top of your skull, and the plantar aponeurosis located on the bottom of your foot. 
Because of their high demand for oxygen, energy, and nutrients, skeletal muscles have a generous supply of blood vessels and nerves. A typical arrangement consists of the muscle being penetrated by one nerve, consisting of somatic motor neurons, with an artery, and one or two veins. Each somatic motor neuron consists of a single axon having multiple branches that extend to different skeletal muscle fibers. There are abundant microscopic blood capillaries found in muscle tissue, and muscle fibers are never far away from at least one capillary. The capillaries supply the muscle with oxygen and nutrients like glucose and fatty acids, and remove wastes and heat that are generated during muscles contraction. In this photograph we can see the relationship between the nerve, muscle, and blood capillaries. Here are several large diameter skeletal muscle fibers and you can kind of see the striations as well on those. Here are some blood capillaries that are branched and always nearby the muscle fibers. Here's our single somatic motor neuron which is branching to the individual muscle fibers forming a relationship called the neuromuscular junction and we'll look more closely like that in upcoming podcasts. This is essentially the communication point between the nervous system and muscular tissue.